<laughs> Welcome everyone to that one Goose Smells podcast. Tonight we're reviewing the book Bad Hair Day. As always, I am joined with my normal crew, uh, Josh Reviews Incorporated, Goose Smells Now, and Reviewer Beware. Uh, Saw Guy Podcast is not part of this recording, but for all the latest on the Saw Guy Podcast, be sure to subscribe and don't forget that bell icon. Ruby, you want to start us off? I, so for this yeah. episode, we have Tim, the main character. He loves magic tricks, magic shows, all about the magic kit, but he's dealing with problems such as his annoying sister keeps spoiling his tricks. So one day he wins a free show to see Amazo, who is his favorite magician. And he sneaks out to see him at a uh, near midnight showing. And when he gets there, amazing. He's like, he's a uh, total jerk to him. He wasn't being very nice to him. Yeah. So, the real hijinks ensues when Tim decides to steal his magic kit. Stealing is wrong. <laughs> Stealing is. So, if you're a child at home watching this, don't steal. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna lie to you. There are a couple Goosebumps books that I just don't like to think about, and this is in the category of the. Uh, you just needed a paycheck, didn't you, Stein? It was a rough one, man. Yes, he needed a 40, 40 for Stein. Well, I mean, Goosebumps was only supposed to be like 13 books long. I'm happy with it as a general, and I like the color. The art is great. It's the ugliest rabbit I've ever seen, but like Josh said, the protagonist is so dumb. Like, the twist in the book just irks me. I'm gonna say, I, yeah. I, I have, I have the entire book to get the, the main villain. I like the main villain. Yeah. Mesa, to me, is just too much of an a-hole, but he's well, still a, a great character villain. to me. He's all the world, so. See, I'm not a fan of this book, but there is good news. What's there that? are Goosebumps books that I'm not a fan of that I don't have much of a bone to throw in. I have a fan of right. If you guys don't mind, I got a little to say on Let's hear it. So, right. as we know, Arl Stein drew most of his time. He released one book a month, which is a pretty fast breakneck pace. Yeah. Some books were at risk of being rushed. I think this is one of the books that suffered the most yeah. from it. And here's why. So, magic tricks, as we all know as a concept, um, obviously there's a trick to all of them that the magician can't really reveal its secrets. It's a show-don't-tell kind of thing. Mm -hmm. What annoys me is, once we started seeing what's in Amazo's kit, we could have had all these cool tricks we got. Instead, some cups, some doves, like bring like a raven or a crow. And that setup got us to the climax, which yeah. was super rushed, and it was very predictable. And the reason, let me tie in why I said the twist was dumb, because it requires many characters to dumb. I understand these characters are 12. Yeah. But I would like to think, even at 12, a kid would be smart enough to realize this guy was being a total asshole to me got me in so much trouble and his kid in his head could have harmed him but no he just has to follow what Amazo says and he's like isn't it great I got turned into a rabbit I'm in his act like no the other problem is I think the humor this one was going for is wit like some of those books go more for humor for example like you can't scare me he's like a very like yeah. slapstick or goey worms tries to be yeah. gross this goes for wit, and the problem is you can't really appreciate the wit because I would have loved if we got real disbelief with the magic kit. Instead, it was just more tricks. And shitty tricks at that. It was rushed and not the problem yeah. is... I can't believe this is... I'm saying this. This is one of the most boring books in the series, and I don't know how that's possible. I know, because it's about magic. You'd think, wow, they're... There was a lot of opportunity, and he really left it on. I'm almost Baker. wondering. 
Was this ghost written? Was this actually not they signed? Done, they could have done a lot of things. Yeah, this one of what, came off as like, this, again, one book a month. I think R.L. Stein could have made a lot more out of this one in more time. This was a very disappointing book. Um, I, yeah. I'm just going to say, for me personally, again, I agree with all your points. I just didn't like the story overall. The only character I technically like is the bad guy, and that's amazing. Amazo was good. He wasn't really my problem with the story. Because but it's I like Amazo, this is the first time in real, in Mario Stein, that we actually have like a real world villain. Because there are assholes out there who are like Amazo. Well, Real or villain? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Brandon, do you have any two cents to throw in here? Toss us a penny or two. Uh, Make an opinion penny. if you're out of a hat. <laughs> I did it. Okay, so what I have to say about this movie... Movie. Uh, look, I should say, sorry, I'm watching a video. Is to me, you know, like those really bad knockoff movies of, of like Kung Fu Panda and stuff or Shrek? Yeah. It's kind of like the, that. You know what this it's feels like? Bat. This feels like it was the third unofficial Goof Lumps video, or Goof Bumps book. So you messed me up with the video yeah. terminology. Have you guys read those? The Goof Lumps? Stay out of the yeah, bathroom? Yeah. This yeah. one could have been the third one. That's how bad it was. But they could have. They could have. For me personally, this book's up there in like the don't read this. It's up there with Wild Afraid of Beasts and Chicken Chicken. Like you just. Mm. Whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. Wild Afraid of Beasts is not a bad book. It's a shitty rip off of the it's fly. A it's a horrible book. You know what? Let's review that another time. I can't yeah, wait. How about this? We should do that for our next book. No, That's we can't do two bad books in a row. Bad Come bad on, bad man. Bad. Don't be like that. <laughs> this one sucked to read. Yeah. This one is sucky to read. I'm saying Wild Afraid of Beasts is not that bad. Have we reviewed Dead it's House bad. yet? It, it's bad. What do we say, man? Have, Anyways. Have we reviewed Dead House yet? Yes. So. Okay, I can't remember. That was our first episode. That was our first episode. Have we done that dummy yet? Yeah, we did that one we already. Need, we'll do dummy next. Because my video got deleted. Like, Guys, we're going to have Yeah, we really are. So, if we were going to rate this book... Rating system. That's what uh, I was gonna say. Let's start with the book itself. Perfect. Uh, I don't want to really rate it too low because, believe it or not, I don't think the book is terrible. Okay. In fact, uh, some of the parts, like the parts with the mechanical snakes, are good. Amazo's good, but it's not good. I'm gonna give this book a four out of ten. Four. John. Give it that four. Masai me. I two. Two? Woo! <laughs> I was gonna go four um, as well. Here. So All four, right. four, two, and four. Let's get on to the episode, because I'll, I'll be honest. I'm not saying the episode was, like, really anything special, but there were definitely some significant improvements made. First off, I think the twist worked better with the fact that, yes, Tim is an idiot, but they made Amazo a good guy and a complete idiot. I didn't like that at all. The, the wit worked. Yeah. Like, it was a lot funnier. Like, I thought the rim shot thing was a really good shtick. Uh, whoever that extra character was, because of that, it was bizarrely, like, entertaining. Um, I'm not going to tell you the episode is anything special. I'm giving the episode a... All things considered, I will give the episode a six and a half out of ten. All okay. right. Brandon? I'm going to be honest. It's not bad, but it's not, you know, like... Yeah, it's okay. It's, it's not like... It's not, it's not like Deep Trouble bad, but it's not like Haunted Mask good. Wait. So I'm going to give it a five. I'm just going to give five. You didn't like the Deep Trouble episode? I didn't like... No, I'm saying I didn't like the Deep Trouble episode. I hated that. I liked it more in the book. I love the... Well, Simon, what is your number? Oh, the episode? Yeah. Sorry, um, the episode, I actually get to a lot more of the book, so I'll give it a seven. I'm going six. It wasn't the worst episode. <clears throat> it was no chillology, but, um, yeah, that was the worst episode, in my opinion, ever. But, eh, you know, it wasn't yeah. bad. I don't like the Amazing Sydney twist, but whatever. I, I, I think the episode thing. had a pulse of energy. Like, it, it didn't... It actually feels like the, they enjoyed it. 
Like, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you the episode is amazing, but I'm gonna go as far as to call Jimmy the episode decent. Ha! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> the episode's funny. Yeah, it, it hits. It hits for a Saturday morning Goosebumps episode. Hi guys, said real quick. I have more notes on me. He says, "Can I ask a question?" Then he forgets. No, I know the question is. What's going on here? Let's break it down. Yes, bro. If they made the uh, what's it called? Chunky Chicken episode. Do you think the episode would be better? That's book, We're saving this for the review of Chicken Chicken. Hell no. No. That would be are you, are you disgusted? With the, with the goosebumps effects, the episode would not have been any better than the book. It would have been like deep trouble. trouble. We yeah. should save that for the actual Chicken Chicken episode because eventually we're going to review it. Deep Trouble. Deep Trouble's episode sucked. That's what I'm saying. Hey, it would be like <laughs> Welcome to Carlsville. I'm a huge faggot. No, <laughs> I can't. Oh my I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, 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 thank you, Doug. Like I the whole trilogy pick was okay, but we're getting off topic. We're getting off topic. Like, we're getting off like, topic. Are we though? Goosebumps is so That's relevant, Brandon. This is a Goosebumps podcast. I know, but when it comes to the Bad Hair Day book, the biggest problem I would say to Arl Stein is. It didn't feel like you really wanted to write about the source material. And if you don't want to write about it, don't write about it. Yeah. It didn't it, really it, seem it, like he was, was heavily invested. Like, there are other factors going on while he was writing the book. You can taste the hatred on every page as it seeped into what he was writing. Yeah, Bad Hair Days is a below average Goosebumps book. It's by no means awful, but it's not below average. Not very good. Disclaimer if this happens to be your favorite book and we're shitting on it, we're sorry, but you have bad taste. You should probably check for coronavirus because loss of taste is one of the nine symptoms of coronavirus. <laughs> Alright, with that being said, do we have any announcements channel wise, starting with Irby? Um working on uh just saying a uh, binge on Netflix. I might be stepping into the Avatar realm. Woo! Woo! And we will answer the question of what is the best element and why is it so obviously the earth element. Really? Oh, you're fire! No, not fire. Water. Water's OP as fuck. Yeah, I agree with Dalton Water. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not actually like so intensely passionate with Earth that I can't see the greatness at all. Oh, dude, Earth is like, Earth's great though. Like, nothing against Earth. Earth Earth and water are top two. Like, no offense, Josh. What do you have with fire? Okay, uh, what? maybe some forms of lava bending, maybe. Shut up, power lines if you were Lava bending, lightning, and fire. There you go. Oh my god. And maybe, like, combustion or explosion? destructive forces in the universe. Fire? Lightning. You can break someone's soul with water bending. You can break someone's what? Soul. It's not you can't. Want to bet? Watch Legend of Korra, book number two. Don't sponsor me yet. <laughs> it's coming to Netflix. Okay. Obviously, this motherfucker has only watched the last Airbender series. Uh, I watched the first season of um, Korra. Guess like, what? I'm going to blow your mind. Ready? Yeah. Lava bending. I've only watched the last Airbender. Uh, I've watched okay. a couple episodes of Korra. Well, okay. then you were in for a treat once you watch Korra. Korra is so good. Not to be that fanboy. Anyway, so, Brandon, any comments um, besides well, I Bioshock? Got one channel I got one channel announcement. Bioshock. So, uh, I went to a Monster Truck show, so I'm going to be making a yes, highlight bro. video. You're going to hear a lot of screaming, a lot of yelling, and a lot of loud trucks. They don't sound loud on camera, but God, I am about deaf. <laughs> and then what's I mean? Okay. I'm Ethan Jake with Draco, part two is already up on my channel. Uh, later on tonight, I'll be doing some free end reviews. And um, also stay tuned to tomorrow, I'm doing my martial arts video for everyone here. So I can actually do martial arts. And a lot of anime reviews coming from Wasami. And why I have been calling you a Simi is because I'm keeping you in character as I am writing a Goosebumps Beyond series myself. And we're starting with Return to Dead House. Can you survive a night in Midnight Mansion? <laughs> and in that story, you reprise the role as Ross with Simi because I have made yes. you two related. 
Yes. So, look forward to the Goosebumps Beyond uh, series coming on my channel soon after I edit not one, but two podcasts this weekend. I want to fucking die. I'm sorry. With that being said, Goosebumps Now is out. This has been that one Goosebumps podcast. Hey, so if you like this podcast, you should go like this Facebook page because I run this. This is another podcast I edit. And while we're at that, why don't you guys subscribe to Brandon Syme and help him hit that 200 goal he's been looking for. Goosebumps Now is out.